Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. This block is called Goose in the Corner and it finishes at 12 inches. Here's the diagram and it doesn't look like much. It's a big white background and just triangles in the corner. And there are, this is actually a four patch because there are four different units in the, in the block. Each of the units finishes at six inches. And here is what the blocks look like, set block to block. You can see it a little bit closer. It makes almost like little bow ties. This is one setting and there's a few other settings I'm going to show you. We just have two patches. Patch A is a six inch finished square. We cut six and a half inch squares. We'll need four patches for the background. And the backgrounds I'm using are low volume prints and I'll show you those. Here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this shape. Patch B is a three inch finished square. We cut three and a half inch squares. We need one patch of each of four different accent fabrics. And here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this shape. There's information here for making a 60 by 84 inch quilt. It's 35 blocks and it tells you how much fabric you need. Uh, for the accent fabrics, you can have 12 assorted strips of three and a half inches times the width of fabric, or at least six fat quarters. You'll probably want to have more fat quarters so you'll have more different colors in the quilt. Then we're going to subcut those into 140 three and a half inch squares. For the background, patch B, use low volume prints, and you need 24 assorted strips cut six and a half inches times the width of fabric or 24 fat quarters. Each fat quarter will give you six of these background fabrics. And we're going to subcut those into 140 six and a half inch squares. The method we're going to use is stitch and flip or a folded corner clipper method. And that's it. We're just going to do one triangle in each of these four background squares. Here are some different layouts you can use. This is sort of a log cabin style layout. And this is, I would call this a streak of lightning, so just on the diagonal. And here is the one I'm going to do. It looks like little tossed bow ties. It's the same as this one here. Here are the fabrics I've chosen, and these are low volume prints. If you're not sure what low volume prints are, let me show you some more. These all are low volume prints. Fold these in half. This one is has light colors, the pastel colors, and I like it. You may not like it, but what I do is lay them out like this, and you can see instantly which pieces don't go or which ones you don't like. So what these are, it's a light background, either cream or white, and you have a very faint design printed on it. In this case, we have some little keys. In this case, it's a little flower unit, and these are circles and dots, and this is a tone on tone. And I chose this one because it, it has really light big squares, and because we're cutting six inch squares, so this will show up pretty well. But this is what low volume prints are. They're a little more interesting than if you had put, say, all of white or all of tan or all of black, all of one color. This gives it more interest. And here are my three and a half inch squares. And this is what we'll do with the stitch and flip. For each of the three and a half inch patches, which is the B patch, we're going to draw a diagonal line across the diagonal. And then if you want to, you can draw a, another line half an inch away from that, that center diagonal line. And this is the side that we're going to cut off. We place this right sides together on one of the background squares. Then we're going to stitch on the diagonal line. And I like to stitch just to the right of the diagonal line and stitch all the way down. Then come back and stitch on this line. Because what we're going to do is trim it off in the middle. Then we'll have a half square triangle you can use in another project. You don't have to save this if you want. You can skip the step of stitching this additional line. Here's what the stitching looks like. I've stitched just slightly to the 
right side of this line and then I've stitched on this half an inch line away. Then we'll take our ruler and cut right in the center. I'll put the quarter inch mark on the diagonal line and then cut it off. What you have here, you can press the seams open and you'll have a half square triangle. Then you'll press these seams open and then here is what your unit looks like. If you don't want to use the stitch and flip method, you can use the folded corner clipper method and put this in one of the corners. Take your folded corner clipper, this is where we want to cut off. Put it on the three and a half inch mark and cut. You can take this and sew it and make an, another half square triangle if you like. Then you'll simply take this to the sewing machine and stitch a quarter of an inch. And you'll get the same unit as this. So do that for all four of your units and then we'll put the block together. Here are the four units and now we're going to put them together into a block. At this point, if you are doing a different layout, just make all of your pieces like this. And then when you decide on your layout, you can start putting them together in rows. I'm going to do these in blocks because I know which layout I want to do. When you're laying these out, the top row goes upper right, lower right. You're looking at the triangles. The next row goes upper left, lower left. And that's the same for all of the blocks. So if you just remember that, and of course, all you have to do is look at the diagram to see. Now we'll piece these two together, then these two, press the seams, and then sew the rows together. And here are the half square triangles that I made. I made enough right now to do four different blocks so I can show you some layouts. So these are the half square triangles you will get for your other projects. All right, here's the block all by itself. Here's the back. What I really like about this block, there is nothing to match, no seams to match, until you sew block to block. That makes it really easy. So let me show you. When you add other blocks to this and you get your design, so they'll go together like this. And let's put some down here. Like that and like that. So there's your design. And then let's move this up here. And you'll just start sewing your blocks together like this. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.